Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. And today I'm going to do a Know Your Ship episode on the Mahan class destroyer. And in particular, we're going to focus a little bit more on USS Lamson, which you will understand why a little bit later. Now, the Mahan class destroyers were built from 1934 to 1937, and a total of 18 ships were completed. Although the final two ships, the Dunlap and the Fanning, are sometimes considered a separate subclass. These ships displaced 1,500 tons, which was fully compliant with treaty limits, although initially things like depth charge racks and things like that were not really equipped because the ships, had they been equipped, would have been overweight, right? So to be treaty compliant, not equipped. However, during wartime, equipment would of course be installed. The ships were 104 meters long with a 10.8 meter beam and a 3.2 meter draft. In the area of machinery, these ships saw big improvements over the Farragut class. They utilized four Babcock and Wilcox or Foster Wheeler boilers and two General Electric steam turbines. The General Electric steam turbines were a lot simpler and a lot more efficient than the old Parsons turbines. Comparing the two, the General Electric turbines had 1,750 blades compared to the 17,500 blades of the Parsons turbines, and they were machined from a forging instead of being built up. The newer turbines were smaller, lighter, and this allowed the installation of additional cruising turbine, which increased the range of the ship by nearly a thousand nautical miles over the Farragut class. Improvements were also made in terms of steam pressure and temperature. Horsepower increased to 46,000 shaft horsepower, giving the ships a top speed of 36.5 knots. The lighter, more efficient machinery allowed the Mahans to have five single 5-inch 38 dual-purpose guns, and 12 21-inch torpedo tubes. The 5-inch 38s on the Mahan class had gun shields for guns 1 and 2 only, while guns 3, 4, and 5 were open air mounts. Initial anti-aircraft armament was very light, comprising only a few 50 caliber machine guns, as the expected role to destroy in the U.S. Navy at the time was as a destroyer screen against enemy destroyers that were launching torpedo attacks. However, as the war evolved, the threat posed by aircraft increased dramatically, and by 1944, one of the 5-inch 38s had been removed for two dual 40mm Bofors and six 20mm Orlikans. Today, we're going to look at one particular ship, like I mentioned earlier, which is the USS Lamson DD-367. Lamson was laid down March 20, 1934, and commissioned into service October 21, 1936. She would sail for Pearl Harbor on the 5th of October, 1939, and she would be stationed here for the next two years. She would actually avoid the attack on Pearl Harbor as she was still en route back from her patrol, although three of her sister ships, the Shaw, Casson, and Downs, would all be hit and severely, and this is an understatement by the way, damaged. Shaw is the ship exploding in this very famous picture taken during the Pearl Harbor attacks. It would be nearly a year before the Shaw would be returned to service. Downs was in a dry dock with Casson and Pennsylvania. Now, Downs took a hit that lit up her fuel tanks, and this caused uncontrollable fires on both her and Casson. And both ships were basically completely destroyed. The only things that survived was the machinery and some equipment. Now, these things would be salvaged, and they were sent to Mare Island Navy Yard, where two entirely new ships were rebuilt around the salvaged materials. And the ships were then given the same hull numbers and names and brought back into service. Lamson, having survived the Pearl Harbor attack, and now the United States being in the war, would deploy into the Pacific Theater of Operations. Initially, she undertook a bunch of patrols and things like that, but finally, on Thursday, the 22nd of October 1942, Lamson and Mahan were instructed to detach themselves from Task Force 16 in order to go shoot up the Japanese pickup boat line west of the Gilbert Islands. They successfully sank the Hakai San Maru, southwest of Tamana. In November, Lamson would join Task Force 67 during the Battle of Tassafaranga, a battle that went pretty horrifically for the U.S. Navy, losing the heavy cruiser USS Northampton and suffering serious damage to the USS Minneapolis, New Orleans, and Pensacola. Lamson was at the rear of the line, and lacking radar, she did not really contribute to that battle. In the confusion, however, she was actually fired upon by a friendly, and her commanding officer wisely broke off the action. She would eventually end up escorting the heavily damaged Minneapolis to Tulangi for repairs. She would spend the rest of 1942 and some of 1943 conducting patrols and providing ASW screens. In August of 1943, she would undertake bombardment duties in support of the Allied landings in New Guinea. 
On November 29th, Lamson and three other destroyers would penetrate nearly 200 miles behind enemy lines to bombard Madang, the main Japanese naval base in New Guinea. She would continue her various fire support missions until early 1944. She would return to the U.S. for an overhaul and would return to the Pacific in August of that year. She would participate in the assault on Leyte, and it was during this campaign that she would face off against the ferocious Japanese kamikazes. From the 11th of November to the 21st of December 1944, a series of air and sea battles occurred, which would be called the Battle of the Ormok Bay. While little known, these engagements by the U.S. Navy were able to prevent the Japanese from resupplying and reinforcing their troops on Leyte. On December the 7th, 1944, exactly three years after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Lamson's sister ship Mahan would be lost to a kamikaze. Lamson then replaced her sister ship as the fighter director ship on station, and at 1400 hours, Lamson herself came under kamikaze attack. She managed to shoot down two of her attackers, but the third would smash into her superstructure. This attack would kill 25 of the ship's crew and injure 54 others. These pictures show the damage done to the ship when she was able to return to the dockyard. She would be in for repairs until May of 1945. She would spend the rest of the war in around the Iwo Jima area, and on the 3rd of September she would arrive in Chichijima to supervise the surrender of the Bonin Islands. She would spend some time in Japan and would finally return home on the 29th of November 1945. The story of the ship itself would end in May of 1946 when she was sunk during Operation Crossroads in atomic weapons testing. Lamson was awarded five battle stars for her Second World War service. Now, normally this is where the story would end, but recently I read a news article, the link is in the description below, about a World War II veteran who served on board the USS Lamson, who is going to be celebrating his 96th birthday on December 30th, 2018. His name is Dwayne Sherman, and his daughter has been on Facebook really hoping that this year he'd get some birthday cards. Folks, if you can, please help him out. His mailing address is coming up on your screen now. And anyways, aside from that, I hope you've enjoyed this Know Your Ship episode. Take care, everybody, and I'll talk to all of you again next time.